Now, as you know, on YouTube, I do get quite a few requests, and uh, yeah, this is this is a, one of them. Uh, basically, it's called the Orange Otter. Now, it's an old pattern. Uh, it's a pattern I've tied quite a few times over the years as well. Uh, I've fished with uh, based on a smaller size than this, um, both on locks and uh, uh, rivers. I'd say probably more locks. And uh, it was a good fly, it's a good beetle style uh, pattern, although it doesn't look much like a beetle. Uh, best known for the soldier beetle, which is a. Uh, well, the soldier beetles can be in different sizes, they are around about this size, size 14. They can be quite red as much as orange or so. Uh, the, the orange works, it's a good one for both a, a beetle like pattern as well as uh, the soldier itself. Um, it's a good style fly, it's a sort of tie it. Now, there's two or three, a couple of versions I've used. This is this kind of like standard one. Uh, and the other would, was uh, a, a Comparadon version. This one here. Now, uh, basically I'll, I'll, tie, I'll tie them both. Just to let you see what they're like. Now, the thread colour can be either, you could use fire orange or you could use, this is a rusty brown. This one's from, uh, this is a, a uni thread. An eight-o, rusty brown, and basically the hook. I mean, the hook choice is. I like it where it's kind of this is like a nymph style like hook, but this is the full and mill. It's the all-purpose medium, which gives you a slightly longer body and it makes it easier to get the, the style of fly. Now, wax the thread. Start at the eye. I would do the the original one first. Now, on the way down, I tie in tail now. Beetles don't have tails, but what this does, uh, especially in a soldier beetle, it gives the impression the legs sit slightly back. There's two longish legs at the back. And uh, as well, it helps to keep the fly on the surface. So having a le having the tail helps. This is just a brown cock hackle. It's bringing the fibres 90 degrees from the stem and the tips all lined up. I usually have a body. I mean, the tail length is not too long, but the shank length over the back. It's easier to tie it on the way down. So just keep the fibres on top, wind to the back. A wee turn underneath just to sort of lift the tail a bit, turn on the hook. And then there's that as your guide, you see. There's the centre of the hook. Just get yourself a, a nice dry fly dubbing. This is a, a hot orange. You get a hot orange red mix which works quite well. I'll have to stick to the standard. So, just slightly double it on, slide it up. Now I get it caught onto the hook and then I can tighten to that point. And then becomes my anchor point and then just build up the body to the centre. To there, stroke the fibres back. That's going forward. I'm using, this is just a cheap Indian cock neck. It's got a nice red. Uh, just, the hackles are not the best in the world, but they're ideal for flies like this. Uh, and you could use whatever, you could use a saddle or whatever. I like to wind, uh, and this one is a wee touch of black at the base. You'll see the colour better if I turn it around, so you can see the brown there. It could be quite light, or in this case it's a kind of dark red. This basically represents the legs and the back of the beetle. Just catch it in, and then I just wind and use up the haggle. Just stroke the fibres back and wind forward as they thread up. I use up the full haggle. Cross your thread, tie it off once you've got as much haggle on. I mean, you can always take fibre off if you think it's overdone. You can always cut some of the fibres away in the underside or so. Now I've tied the same pattern in different colours, claret, black, obviously, olive, and it works, it's a good style, so, now we get more dubbing, but this time as you see I've taken the thread down a wee bit, get my dubbing on, and then I'm just going to work up the way, up towards the hackle, and then coming back through, It's so simply a fly, it's a really simple fly to tie. You can beef it up to suit yourself. 
the tight a wee bit heavier. I'll just do that just to show you. Sometimes the, the front, because it's obviously the head's a wee bit heavier, so even having a different colour works. Uh, it's a darker head, even a, it's a brown head works. So it's a very versatile style of fly. There we are. Just a wee bit better. You can leave it rough and ready as it is, that's fine. I'm just going to leave it a wee bit varnish on my thread and put finish. One, two, three, four, there you go. And then that's it. Obviously you could pull away the rough it up, I mean that's fine. There you go, and that's your orange otter. Now I'll tie the Comparadon version, which is basically the same, except to get deer hair in the centre. Using the same hook, same thread, uh, the rusty brown. Now it's important that you wax your thread here because I'm going to be tying the deer hair in first. So I need to make, I like to make sure there's wax on the thread just for the extra grip. So we start at the eye, come down, I'm going to wind to the point of the hook. Then I'm going to come back up, make sure I'm about the halfway mark, between the halfway the centre of the shank. Tying some deer hair. Now the deer hair I'm using, this is a, a row deer that I've dyed cinnamon. Now it just gives it the right colour for the, to replace the hackle. It can be light or dark. Hot orange is quite good, the row deer dyed hot orange, it's quite nice. So if you've got that, or even if you haven't, just use the natural. Now I'm removing the fluff, the under fluff, sorry, and any broken ends. Makes it easier to stack and tie in. So we tips into the stacker, and we tap it to my desk. Tips have lined up, and then remove it from the stacker. Basically, just check it's alright, any broken ends, take them away. Any fluff here, it's fell on the hook, take them away. Just check your distance, that's about right. They're not too long, you're looking round about the length of the shank. Now, I'm going to make sure I wax my thread, so it will give you the extra grip. And then just a kind of couple of pinching loops, quite loose, and then tighten up. What I like to do is then wind towards the back, come down, a, kind of spread a, 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 a ton of thread, like, maybe a mill down, and then tighten up. And then what I'm doing is working towards the back, breaking off the, the deer here. You get a nice, neat cut. If you do that, just checking the, the deer here. That looks fine. So just leave it the way it is. Then you get a hackle from the Cock neck, the actual red. Need some of the fibres for the tail. Just uh, again, which is make sure you get enough fibre. Don't be shy with it. Bring it 90 degrees from the stem. Tips will line up. You can tear it away. Now you're looking for a. There's not a tail on the the beetle like, but these will represent the legs that sit usually further back. But help support the fly it sits up. So we just tie these on. And you trim away the excess. Yeah, a wee bit of wax just to make sure there's plenty of grip. Catch it on, keeping the fibres on top of the shank, wind to the back of the hook. I usually like to come underneath, pull towards the front, lifting the, the fibres with that turn. There you go, and there's your tail. Now we're looking for, we're all at the same arms dubbing. Okay, work up. Tidying up as we go. So, just your favourite dubbing could be, you could, I've tied them with seals for, I've tied them with uh, SLF, I've got a few fibres over the years. And they just work my way up. They say different colours of this fly, same style. Just change the body colour. Uh, it does work as a a good beetle pattern, surprisingly. It does where it's originally tied. Just make sure you wind your thread or dubbing right up to the wing. 
just taking away some of the dubbing and then what I'm going to do is slide the dubbing back up come in in front it'll tighten up a wee bit with the dubbing nice and tight see where we are check, don't want it going too loose I'm going to wind towards the, the eye I'm going to get some more dubbing in now before I do that I'm just going to uh, just trim some of this a wee bit back it's a wee bit long some of the fibres on top just take them away Pull it. Like that. A bit more dubbing. It's going to work for the front up. It's easier times. I find it easier to so build up from the, the eye area. So if we build up from say here, just about head length away. Just twist the dubbing if you need to tighten it up. Stretch it out if you need it's too thick. And then work my way back through Take away the excess Can go back there a wee bit too much And then small head with the thread uh, Like we did before, just a wee bit of varnish on the thread And quite finish. Turn away. And there we are. And that's basically your comparison uh, of the orange otter. It says he's a variant. Turn away some of the longer fibres just to get that nice shape. Pull away. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, many thanks for watching.